self-censure. She tries to enjoy every opportunity, even when they aren't hers. The objectives of her speech are to draw entertaining material from sources other than her own and to adapt this material to her topic. Here's Carrie Cargill. Everyone starts off with many roads to travel down. The only downside is that once you've made a choice, there's one road that you don't get to experience. Well, Toast Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and our guest, I found a way to get around this. Back in high school, I met a young woman named Julie. We went to separate high schools. I went to East Lansing and she went to Williamston, but we worked together at Bill Knapp's restaurant. We both went on to Michigan State University and very early, we kind of separated. She decided to go to Spain to do a study abroad for a whole semester, and I stayed back and worked on campus. When she got back at the end of the fall semester, we got together and had lunch. She was telling me all about her travels. She said, Seville is beautiful. It's absolutely amazing. And she showed me the pictures. And she said, but it's kind of different. I'm like, well, yeah. She said, well, there were several times that classes were canceled. Like, what do you mean your classes were canceled? Well, the buildings are not connected, and they have walkways that are covered, but every once in a while there's a gap in the walkway. So we got to the end of one of the covers, and it was raining. And no one was willing to cross the open space to get to the other walkway to get to the building that the class was in, so class was canceled. And I went, seriously? And she's like, oh yeah, it happened all the time. Okay, it's kind of different. She said, now you're gonna love this part. Every one of the Americans was paired with a Spaniard student, and we were there to practice our Spanish and to learn about their culture, and they were paired with us to practice their English and to learn about our culture. I went, well, that's kind of nice, kind of like a mentor kind of thing. She said, yeah, and, and all of the Americans got together at Thanksgiving. You know, and I said, well, isn't that like an American holiday? And she's like, well, exactly. So they weren't officially celebrating it there. So we got together and we had our, our buddies go with us. And I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. She said, yeah, but we sat down and I was explaining to Rosa, my, my partner, about Thanksgiving. You know, that there's the historical aspect and then there's the reality of eating obscene amounts of food and watching football. And Rosa was really interested. She's like, really, you know, tell me more about this meal. And so Julie started going through and she starts with the turkey and the stuffing and her family had some green bean casserole with the onion things on top. And then she made it to the dessert. And she was explaining the dessert and Rosa looked horrified. And Julie stopped for a moment and she, she explained it again. And, and again, Rosa is just, and, and Julie was thinking, you know, I mean, I, I get it. You know, if you're not used to pumpkin, you know, pumpkin pie, it, it may not be interesting, but it really isn't, like, horrifying. So she said, you know, Rosa, come here. And they went over and they talked to the advisor. And the advisor's like, well, you know, what did you tell her? And, and Julie said it, and the advisor kind of went, oh, congratulations, Julie. You just shared the American tradition of having creamed penis pie with whipped cream on top. <laughs> and Julie just went, oh, that's not good. And I, of course, laughed so hard because Julie tries to be so precise in everything and this time she kind of missed. But in spite of the language issue, I still thought that she was really lucky to have that experience. Several years later, again, our paths are close enough that we still stay in contact, but we've gone down different roads. We both have graduated from college. We both have gotten married. I have stayed in the mid-Michigan area and live in Mason. She has gone off to California. She lives in a gorgeous house in the hills of Oakland. Her husband likes to travel with her. And one time, they went to France. 
And again, she came back to Michigan and we had lunch together and she's like, I have to tell you about this. It's absolutely amazing. And she went on and she described the food and the weather and the architecture and of course the Champs-Élysées and she goes on and she says, yeah, but there, there was a hitch. Like, what happened? She said, well, on the way back, we were running out of time. We were gonna miss our flight at Heathrow. So we hit the ground and I had to go to the bathroom. So I run into the bathroom, do my business, come back out and Don and I, Don's her husband, we run as fast as we can basically to the other end of Heathrow to catch our flight. And I'm envisioning Julie has long hair and she likes wearing long flowing skirts. And so I'm saying, oh, I can just see you flowing through the airport with your hair behind you and your skirt behind you and I am and she's like wait like what do you mean wait and she's like there's a problem with your vision I'm like what do you mean she said well once I got to the terminal that I was going to a nice lady took me aside and said honey your skirt's tucked up <laughs> she apparently had the bottom of her shirt tucked into her pantyhose and she had just spent the last 10 minutes flashing all of Europe <laughs> as she ran through Heathrow Airport. <laughs> but once again, in spite of her issues, I still thought that she was lucky. Flash forward again, and this is just a couple of years ago. She now has a young son. I am divorced and don't have children. She is divorced and has her son. And she said, when we were having coffee one day, you know, we both grew up being tomboys. I'm like, yeah. She's like, I thought it was like similar to being boys. I'm like, yeah, so did I. And she's like, we were wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. She said, I overheard uh, Zach, my son, in the bathroom with his buddy Miles at their play date. And he exclaimed, Miles, come smell my poop. <laughs> <laughs> This is one time that I'm thinking I'm the lucky one here, so I'll leave her to that road and she can travel it alone. And fortunately, I am being beeped off stage. I expect to continue having stories to share back and forth. And interestingly enough, I had dinner with Julie last night and she actually takes the same view and enjoys the stories from my road also. So thank you very much for your time.